not tall enough for for this. <laughs> Maybe it would work for crits. barrel Say hi to our friends. Junior says hi. He says, you guys take away the attention from me. Hi friends, it's Jen at the Sunshine Farm. I just went outside, I visited the animals. Even though it's super cold outside, it made me feel a lot more at peace and it reminded me why we moved here in the first place. So I wanted to tell you the story of how we were able to buy our farm at the ages of 22 and Chris, who was 23 at the time. We've had so many people come to our house and think I'm the daughter of somebody who lives here. They'll say, where are your mom and dad? Not here, they're in California. Um, I've had somebody say, you look too young to live here. I had someone ask me, did you inherit the farm? And it's really interesting because I wish they would just ask me, how are you able to buy a farm at such a young age? Because that's a question I could answer. So I wanted to answer that for you today. Just like talking about our debt-free journey, this is a very personal journey and it's going to look very different depending on your circumstances, which we all have such different circumstances. But I want to encourage you that if you have a dream that you can try to make it happen and that there are in many ways things you can do now to start preparing for that dream to become a reality. So in 2015, 
Chris and I had just gotten married and we purchased a little home in the city of Rochester. The home was really cute. It was a perfect size for us. It had a lot of character, but it was in a very urban environment. So we were very limited in what we could do in terms of homesteading. We did start a little four by six raised bed and we grew a couple tomato plants, a couple pepper plants, and maybe a cucumber plant. But I wasn't interested in gardening at that point. The only thing I was really interested in was having my own horse. Around that time, I started horseback riding again at a local farm that actually isn't too far from where we are now. And I just found that that experience was so peaceful for me and I felt like I found myself when I was on a horse, near a horse. So we had only been at our house for about eight or nine months when we started talking about the possibility of moving to a farm. I had been experiencing some weird health issues that caused a lot of digestive problems, nerve issues and muscle aches and pains, headaches and just general depression and anxiety about what was going on with my body. I started learning that the only way my body was responding to healing was through my diet and through adopting a really heavy plant-based diet with a lot of natural foods, fresh foods, and really avoiding things like oils, alcohol, high levels of sugars. And the biggest trigger for me, I found out, was bread. I learned at that time that I actually have an intolerance to bread and wheat products, so I unfortunately have to adopt a gluten-free diet as I was experiencing a lot of health issues. I thought, what are we waiting for? Life is so short. I could have been diagnosed with something much more serious, and I don't want to waste another minute dreaming instead of trying to find a way to make our dreams a reality. I felt like we could do it now. The reason I thought it was a possibility is because when we bought our first little house in the city, we actually only knew that Chris would be working at the time. He had a job lined up. I wasn't sure what I was going to do next. So we knew we could afford that little house on one income. Once I started working a full-time job, even though I wasn't making a lot of money, we were able to save almost my entire salary and put that towards what we used as a down payment and closing costs for our farm. While we didn't get anything really back from our small house in the city, just because we only lived there for a short period of time, we were able to save really well because we were only living according to that one income that we had planned for. So as our income grew and the money coming in grew, we didn't up our cost of living. We kept it the same and even were tight in many instances so that we could save really well for this farm. Now I know a lot of people our age um, will spend their extra income on things like travel and going out to eat, but I've always been a very frugal person. I don't like to spend money and I really wanted my dream to come true. So I was very determined to save well, to save hard, to make it possible. Now, we were able to do this because we lived in a house where the mortgage and tax was under $800 a month. It was pretty low cost of living where we were. And because of that low cost of living and that unexpected extra income, that allowed us to save a lot, really in a short period of time, to be able to move where we are now. Where we are now is more than double what we were paying when we were in that little house in the city. It's a lot more expensive, but we're able to live out our dream here, and to us it's worth it. And over time, through our debt-free journey, and as our incomes grow, we will do the same thing we did when we lived in our previous home and we'll keep our expenses as close as possible to what they are now and even lower them where we can. So that way we can pay off more of our debt quicker and, and be able to experience that financial freedom. It wasn't just saving for a year to move here. There's that whole history of what allowed us to be able to buy our first home right after we got married in the first place. I had actually saved my entire time through college and even some of my high school graduation money to be able to do something with the, the money. I didn't really know what I was going to use it for, but I, I kept saving. It wasn't until we got engaged and Chris and I were looking at rental properties that we just decided, why, why can't we just buy a house? Why not? We had been told, kind of, this is what your life should look like. You should rent an apartment, you should save, you should buy a house in a starter neighborhood. I just didn't like that idea. I don't like living according to an expectation just because it's an expectation for me. If something's possible and it's what we want, I like to try to find a way to make it happen. At first when I told Chris I wanted to move to a farm, he was very skeptical. He did not think we could afford it. And he was concerned that I was dreaming a little too big, a little too soon. And that's fair. But he let me dream. And eventually my dream became his dream and he was willing to look. 
A big reason we were able to buy this property, it dropped down in price significantly before we even looked at it, so we knew it was in our price range. And then the second thing was the sellers were willing to contribute to the closing costs, which they call seller concessions. We had more flexibility in what we could put down, and that enabled us to have some wiggle room for an emergency fund, so we weren't completely house broke. I will say we did not put a lot down. We only put 5% down on this house, which is what allowed us to buy this farm. Um, in our early 20s. It takes a long time to save a good amount of money and while we could have lived in the city for a few more years and saved better, I just felt like I didn't want to spend my years waiting for a dream to become realized. We decided that we could financially do it and it meant we didn't have as much equity in our home right away, but it was worth it to us to be able to start this dream early on. And what this means for us is that we don't have the flexibility to leave our jobs. Our cost of living with this farm is more expensive than we're able to take on with one income. But we love love it here and we both enjoy our jobs. Somebody asked me how we learned to save well and my biggest tip would be just to really cut any extra expenses as you can and the second thing would be as your income increases keep your cost of living the same so that you can save anything extra that's coming in and then you'll end up with a lot more than you expected. Someone also asked what we do for a living that allows us to do this. Um, Chris is an energy engineer. I work at a local university where I do project coordination. Both of our jobs are not high, high earning positions. We're not, you know, taking in a ton of money each month. But we do have stable careers that we were able to get into because we went to four-year undergraduate institutions. There are three more questions I wanted to answer in this video that my Instagram followers sent me. The first one, someone asked what our first project was here at the farm, and that was adding chickens. We bought a chicken coop, and Chris built a chicken run, and we added the chickens. About at the same time, we did add our miniature horse, Justin, and a couple of months later, we added TJ, our paint horse. I talk about this more in the video titled Two Years at the Farm, and I will link this at the end. Another question someone asked is how much space we actually have. We have 12 and a half acres here, about six to seven acres are pasture, a few acres are woods, and then the rest is like front yard, side yard, and things like that. Someone else asked if we make, sell stuff, or find another way to bring in income for our farm. No, not at the moment. Um, we're not making anything from the farm. Um, other than maybe $4 here and there for um, free range organic eggs, but that's obviously not gonna make a dent in the mortgage. All of our income right now is coming from our two full-time jobs. We do have Airbnb in our guest bedroom where we rent out our room and a bathroom, which is right near the room. Um, on the weekends, this is more popular in the summertime, but I'm actually going to be having a photographer renting out the space this weekend. So that brings in just a little over $100 every weekend that somebody rents it. Although we don't have it 50 weekends out of the year, we probably only have like 10 to 15 each year. And you do have to take into account the cost of cleaning, and we feed them breakfast, so there are some other factors that go in that, in that equation as well. We do possibly have dreams of finding an old Airstream trailer, renovating it, and renting that out full time um, here on the property, maybe building a cabin or doing something like that, but those are lofty dreams and not in the immediate future. Another thing we took into consideration when buying a farm property was we didn't need a huge house. Our house is only 1,700 square feet. We weren't looking for something huge and that will really change what you can afford. On top of that, we were lucky with the timing of the market and what was available and this place had dropped significantly in price and so we did get a little bit lucky. The house also hasn't been fully remodeled or anything like that. We were willing to put some sweat equity into the home and make things our own. We actually preferred that and that also allowed us to be able to buy this place. My husband just got home. Hey guys. He'll contribute to the conversation. I'll uh, ask him some questions and see what he has to say. So that's the story of how we were able to buy our farm in our early 20s. And I hope that can be helpful to you if you're dreaming of buying a farm and you're thinking it's so far off in the future you can't even imagine being able to do it soon. Um, I do realize there are some situations in both of our lives that have given us a step up towards making this dream come true and I don't want to ignore those. But we also did have to make a lot of steps towards that on our own and those things are what allowed us to pursue this dream. And also just being able to sacrifice other things 
things like travel, going out to eat a lot, or fancy clothing, we do make those sacrifices so we can live this farm life that I've always wanted and that Chris now really enjoys. What did you think when I first told you I wanted to look at farm properties? I was definitely confused and hesitant. Um, I think the confusion was because we had only been in our previous house for about a year and a half. And then the hesitation is just my own natural reaction to any big idea or change. It takes me a long time to come around to those things and to fully evaluate them and be comfortable with them. So anytime I hear a big idea or a big piece of news, it always throws me off a little bit. How has this experience of living on a homestead made you more willing to live against the grain? I think the wealth of opportunities and new things that we are somewhat forced to try, but somewhat also we just want to try out here, um, has kind of reshaped my worldview a little bit. I think the so I think getting used to um, trying new things continuously. It grows my comfort zone. I don't know if I can point exactly to how things at my viewpoint has changed, but I know through this experience, I have been much more willing to embrace adventures, embrace new experiences, um, new projects. Um, I think there's a confidence within me that's grown um, exponentially than from what it was previously. Um, and that's kind of come, that comes about in my confidence in my abilities to do the projects that we need to get done on the farm to build the structures and shelters, to do the renovations in the house, to take care of the animals, and to venture out and get new animals we haven't had before. I'd say that my confidence has probably just grown a lot in the past two years that we've lived here. What are three things that helped us be able to purchase a farm in our early 20s? I think a willingness to buck the norm, um, and that we saw that from the very beginning when we a, got married right out of college. We also looked to purchase a house right away. So I think we kind of had that mindset ingrained into who we are and uh, who we are as a couple. And I think that was probably the biggest instigator to allowing us to make this jump. I didn't realize he's right next to me. I think, so the, probably the second thing that helped us out the most was being able to save a lot uh, in the first house we were living in. Um, so the first place we purchased, it was not a very expensive house, at least compared to you know the, the general market with across the country. That allowed us to really save up a lot of our income in that just the short span that we're there, a year and a half, save up a lot of the income that both Jen and I were earning at the time. Um, and I don't know if we had a really clear goal or plan in how we were doing that. It was just somewhat arbitrary, and we knew that we were bringing in more than we actually needed to spend. And so we were able to put a lot of that into a savings account. And so as a result of that, we were able to take that savings and jump into a new farm purchase just about a year after we gotten married and purchased the first house. What is your favorite part about living on a farm? My favorite part is the freedom that it brings about, the freedom to make decisions, to try new things, to uh, embrace what you want, um, and to the freedom to buck the trends and buck the norms that society and our culture really tries to put on us and enforce on us. I think the farm, in that freedom, it gives us a lot of flexibility and it allows us to explore a lot of things and there's just something about that freedom that I think opens up our, our lifestyle, opens up our enjoyment of our lives, it just increases our satisfaction of our, of our lives and of our marriage and the future as well, raising kids. I put a t-shirt on too, this fire is so hot. First fire of 2019, guys. Sorry that the lighting got so crummy and now it's like all yellow. We'll work on that. but. The last thing I wanted to say is that neither Chris nor I had any experience of farming going into this. We had never had chickens, we didn't have families that had farms, 
Um, I had ridden horses, but I'd never owned a horse and cared for a horse. We had never had goats. We didn't have a lot of experience working with a barn or really any big renovation projects. So a lot of this has been learning as we go. And thanks to YouTube, Google, and some other great resources, it hasn't been that bad. So if you're dreaming of doing this, but you feel like you wouldn't even know where to start, we'd love to answer questions and help guide you in that process. Um, reach, us, reach out, send us an email, comment below, and we'd love to connect with you. Thank you guys for watching this video. Um, we hope you enjoyed hearing a little bit about our story and we hope it's an encouragement to you as you dream. Please subscribe. You can do so at the end of this video. The little circle icon, you can hit that button and hit subscribe and like this video if you enjoyed this style of, of recording and learning a little bit more about our experience and our journey. Bye guys. See you guys.